tragedy, and, uh, and I thank you for doing that. You may have often heard the phrase that history repeats itself, and I want to uh, say that I totally disagree with that. Today is Wednesday, October 28, 2020. There has never been an October 28, 2020 ever before. There will never be an October 28, 2020 ever again. This is the day that the Lord has made. It's a very unique day. It's a one-of-a-kind day. There may be another October 28th, but it'll be 2021 if that happens. So history does not repeat itself. However, seasons do. It's fall again in Tennessee. In fact, I've got one of my fall shirts out because I absolutely love this time of year. The temperatures get cooler at night, which causes... Uh, I don't know all the uh, scientific uh, uh, description behind it, but I just enjoy the, the, the beautiful uh, colors that are changing on the trees and the, the coolness in the air, and uh, it, it, it's just wonderful and uh, uh, just a glorious sight. But here's the thing. There's so much that we cannot change, right? There's a, there's a, a storm coming up from... Uh, from the, from the Gulf. Not much we could do about it. We could pray about it. We could prepare to, to deal with it. But we can't, we can't really change that. We can't keep the winter from coming. There's going to be a change. And then there's going to be spring and summer and fall again, should the Lord tarry. There's a lot about life we cannot change. So my encouragement is don't worry about things you can't change. If you can't change it, it's ridiculous to worry about it. Pray about it. Plan through it. In fact, the Bible says in Philippians 4, 6, and 7, to be anxious or don't worry about anything. Be anxious for nothing, he says, but in everything. By prayer, supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God, and the peace of God which passes understanding 
will keep our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Now he tells us right there, there's parts of God, parts of uh, uh, parts of, uh, of, of the scriptures that we cannot understand. No way we can understand it. But that doesn't mean that we can't enjoy it. You may not understand scientifically what makes all of the colors change, but it doesn't keep us from enjoying it and and uh, and, and appreciating it. So so to worry about things you can't change is ridiculous. To worry about things that we can change, I'm going to say is even more ridiculous. If you can change it, then change it. Do something about it, right? So the question tonight is that I have for you in this fall season where we're experiencing a lot of these changes. Is there, is there something that you would like to change? Is there anything that maybe even the Lord has laid on your heart to change, right? Um, while we're talking tonight, there may be something the Holy Spirit brings to your remembrance or, or to your mind that says, you know what? I want you to change this area. We need to, to make a change here. Here's what I know about change. If we're going to make a change, we have to make a plan for that change. John Maxwell says it this way. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. <laughs> I like that. I, I believe that's true. But here's also what I want to point out. That failure is not a person. Failure is an event. We can learn from uh, a failure and say, hey, well, we don't need to do it that way, right? But, uh, but, but, but here's what I know. We can do all we can to help prevent many failures if we will plan and include the Lord in those plans. So is there something that I need to change? Is there something that you need to change or would like to see changed? Then make a plan, pray about it, surrender it to the, to the Lord, invite Holy Spirit to, to lead and guide you, and, uh, and, and uh, don't leave the Lord out of your plans. Let me give you just a few scriptures about that. Proverbs 15, 22 says, Without counsel, plans go awry. But in the multitude of counselors, they are established. Another proverb, 16 and 9, A man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. Proverbs 19 and 21, There are many plans in a man's heart. Never the Lord, nevertheless, the Lord's counsel, that will stand. Jesus said it this way, heaven and earth may pass away, but my words will never pass away. Invite the Lord's counsel into your plans. Proverbs 21 and 5, the plans of the diligent lead surely to plenty, but those of everyone who is hasty surely to poverty. I love a familiar scripture that many of us knew, know found in Jeremiah 29 11. For I know the thoughts or the plans, literally, that I think toward you, says the Lord. Do you know the Lord is thinking about you right now? He has a purpose and a plan for your life. Don't leave him out. In fact, if you're listening to my voice right now and you've left the Lord out of your plans, I invite you right now to make that change and invite him into your plans. You might be listening to me and you've never even invited him to be the Lord of your life. Don't leave him out. He has a great plan and a purpose for your life. Right? Invite him in there. I know the plans I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace, not of evil. God has your best in mind to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you search for me. With all of your heart, I just exhort you in the name of the Lord, don't leave the Lord out of your plans. Don't leave him out of your life. So if we're wanting to make a change and we realize there needs to be a change, then the question is, how does one change? We've been talking about behavior of the believer in the last several Sundays here at Grace Community in Cleveland, Tennessee. But but I want to kind of go back to a scripture uh, that we started with found in Romans 12, verse number 2. Do not be conformed to this world, 
but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Why? That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Oftentimes, perhaps the, the, the statement that I hear most as a pastor, Pastor, if I knew what God's will was, then I would just do that. And and here's, here's the, the truth. Don't be conformed to the world. The world leaves God out. They, they, their thinking and their plans don't include the Lord. They're going to come to nothing. It's not going to, it's not going to serve you very well at all. It's going to be a dead end stream. So be transformed by the renewing of our mind so that we can know what is the perfect will of God. You know, here's why that's important. He says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Did you know that the way you think will directly affect the way you act? It's true. If you want to change the way you act, if, if you want to make a change, then you have to start with changing the way you think. The opposite of a lie is the truth. Here's what Jesus said about the truth. If you abide in my word, you're my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. I was talking with someone today, and they're considering a divorce. And uh, my counsel to them was, you know, whatever the situation going on, it's, it's, it's really I'm praying for this for this couple because it's just been a short time that they've been married. Legally, can they get divorced according to the world system? Yes. He can go before a judge. They can make their case, pay their money, and he will grant them a divorce. He can set them free. But here's what I know. Even with children involved, while the judge can set them free, he can't make them free because they are bound. They're bound in their spirit. They're bound in their, um, through the children. They're bound in their relationship. And no matter how far away physically they may get from each other, the judge can't make them free of that. They've shared too much. You can't undo that. We talked about it this past Sunday. And I don't want to re redo that. We're talking about change. But, but, but the truth will make us free. Do you feel bound? Maybe there needs to be a change in your life because you, you feel bound or, or maybe there's addiction or bad habit. Look, if you change the way you think about it, be transformed in the renewing of your mind, you'll be able to, to act different and make that change. And you don't have to do it alone because when Jesus is the Lord of your life, He gives you Holy Spirit and you have the Word of God, Holy Spirit of God and the people of God to encourage you in this Christian life. And it's a wonderful change. I can testify it's a wonderful change. You'll never change behavior of yourself or anyone else before the mind is renewed. You ever seen, uh, I, I don't know the man's last name, I think his first name is Caesar. He has a show called The Dog Whisperer. You ever seen that? It's really something. And, and what Caesar does is he comes into a situation and where there's a, a, a dog that has aggressive behavior and he coaches the dog and he works with the dog and almost immediately there's a change in the dog's behavior. How does he achieve that? Well, he changes the way that the, that the dog thinks because dogs instinctively uh, are pack animals. There's always a pack in the wild. There's always going to be that, that alpha dog. There's going to, always going to be that pack leader. And what Caesar helps that dog to realize is that the dog is not the leader. I love my little puppy, Gracie. She weighs about five pounds. She's half Yorkie and half miniature poodle, right? We call her a Yorkie poodle. That's her breed. And, uh, but even a little five-pound dog, would think that it's supposed to be in charge because it's, it's an instinct that it's a pack animal. But lovingly, Gracie has learned that she has a very good life because I provide that for her. Denise provides that for her. And she knows that 
she is not the pack leader in the Mendel household. <laughs> now, we don't abuse her. We love her, and she knows that we take care of her. But, but, but we've changed her mind. We've trained her, and, and she understands that when her mind is changed, she has a better life. And it's the same way with, with people. We are stewards of her life. We're stewards of the gifts and abilities and the talents that we have. We're, we're stewards of the resources that God entrusts to us. We're not owners. We have a God who loves us, who created us in his image. We have a Lord and a Savior. And here's what I know. The more enslaved I become to his, uh, to his lordship, the freer I am. I talked with somebody not long ago, and they said, and I ask him, well, what is it that you're looking for? I want to be free. I want my freedom. Well, you've always had your freedom. You can choose. Uh, you, you're free to choose every day of your life. However, you're not free from the consequences of your choices. This person with all their freedom has found themselves in a lot of situations they regret ever being in. But they were free. And that's why I say when we when we submit our lives under the Lordship of Jesus Christ, we don't become puppets. We're, we're, we're just, we're more free because of the scripture we've already read. God has a purpose and a plan for our life. He has good thoughts toward us. And, and when we realize that and we submit to his Lordship, we begin to experience the abundant life, a purpose-filled life. I'll talk with you more about that. Call me sometime. My number's not unlisted, right? Reach out to us on Facebook if, if, if you'd like, or through, through the YouTube channel. So, Holy Spirit, the Word of God, the people of God encouraging us can help us to renew our minds and live a successful Christian purpose-filled life that, that, that we're created for. You know, the biblical term for changing one's mind is the word repentance, right? And uh, repentance means it's a turning away from. It's a turning away from sin, from disobedience, from rebellion, and we turn back to God. Jesus came in Matthew 9, 13, and in Luke 5, 32. The Bible says Jesus came to call sinners to repentance. It's like a 180 turn. You're going this way, but you turn completely. You change your mind, and you go the opposite direction. The word repent comes from the, from the Greek, and literally it means to change your mind. God changed his mind. In Genesis 6, he changed his mind about even creating people at one point. Right? Praise the Lord. You and I are here because one person can make a difference. Did you realize you can make a difference for your family, for future generations, even for creation? Noah did. You know that um, not only that, but um, uh, Judas changed his mind uh, with regret about his conduct toward Christ, Matthew 27. David changed his mind. Uh, uh, he had a prayer of repentance after he was confronted with his sin. In Psalm 51, you can read his prayer. Repentance, then, is to change the way we think about something and accept the way God thinks about something. I love what Dr. Tony Evans uh, has said, and you've heard me say it. I just repeat it because I think it's true. That is that there are two answers to every question. There's what God says about it, and there's what everybody else says about it. Everybody else is wrong. We have to change our mind and understand that Jesus came to to set us free, and repentance is to change the way we think about it and to think, uh, accept the way that God thinks about it. So we see then that life change happens only after we change our thinking. And that's why all of the teaching and preaching that I try to do as a pastor uh, uh, is, is to, to encourage people, what does God say about it? What does the Word of God say about it? Let this transform our minds so that we can make those changes necessary to enjoy a spirit-filled, God-filled, purpose-filled, joy-filled life. That's exactly right. Jesus preached this. Matthew 4 and 17, he began to preach and to say, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. 
in Mark 1, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The disciples in, in Mark 6, they went out and preached that people should repent. John the Baptist in Matthew 3 and 2, he said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Peter at Pentecost, after the Holy Spirit was poured out in the upper room, his message was repent and let each one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Even in the book of Revelation, uh, John is writing under the unction of the Holy Spirit uh, where Jesus is talking to the churches and he tells the churches to repent. Change the way you're thinking about it so you'll change your behavior about it. Jesus always, uh, where he can, gives uh, uh, praise and accommodation, but, but some places he couldn't. But in Revelation, you read that early in, in the book where, where he tells the churches to repent. So how do we know that there's been true repentance? Well, it's going to show up in the behavior. It's going to, it's, it's going to bear fruit, right? Jesus said, herein is the Father glorified that you bear much fruit and that your fruit should remain. When there's true repentance, when we truly change our thinking about something, it's going to show up in our behavior. So that's what I'm saying. Is there something that the Lord's been dealing with you about changing? Is there something that you just realize, you know what? I can do better than this. I am better than this. I want to make a change. Lord, help me to make this change. John the Baptist said in Matthew 3 and 8, therefore bear fruits worthy of repentance. In other words, if you've changed your mind about God and the things of God, then you'll see the results of it. It's going to show up. You're going to bear fruit. We don't need to judge people, but it's obvious when we see the fruit of uh, that, that one is bearing. No one in and of themselves can convince people to change their mind about the things of God uh, or really anything else. But, but it's only when we apply the Word of God that the Bible says we can truly be transformed. That's why I say we've got to change our mind about how, how we or the world thinks about situations and discover and apply what God thinks and says about a situation. Again, God uses, uh, has sent his Holy Spirit to live inside of us, to, to teach us, to empower us, to guide us. 1 Corinthians 2 and 13 says, when we tell you these things, we do not... Use words that come from human wisdom. Instead, we speak words given to us by the Spirit, using the Spirit's words to explain spiritual truth. In 2 Samuel 23, uh, Samuel says, The Spirit of the Lord spoke by me, and His word was on my tongue. So a lot of what I'm sharing with you is through my own life experience, through my own study, through my own observation, but it's full of the Word of God because I don't want to just give you my opinion. I want to share with you and encourage you. Here's what God is saying about it. Zechariah 4 and 6, It's not by might nor by power, but by my Spirit, says the Lord of hosts. You want to make a change? You can't just try harder. Holy Spirit will help you to see and discover and realize what God says about it. You apply that, and man, everything will change. There's been a wonderful change. The Apostle Paul in Romans 1 said this, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God for salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also the Greek, for in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Proverbs says this, and I'm going to try to close it. Where there is no revelation... The people cast off restraint. The New Living Translation of Proverbs 29, 18 says, when people do not accept divine guidance, they run wild. In other words, if you won't think, if you don't change your thinking and be transformed and you're by renewing of your mind to, to what God says about it, it's not going to work. He created life. He's given you life and me life and he created the world. Let's, let's, let's use his... Uh, owner's manual, the Bible, 
See what God says about it and apply it to every situation. The Message Bible says it reads that very verse uh, uh, this way, Proverbs 29, 18. If people can't see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. But when they attend to what he reveals, they are most blessed. Our own worship leader, uh, Gregory Paul Tao, wonderful musician, singer, and songwriter. I want to share with you some of the words from a song that he wrote. It's simply called Change. He said, I've come on a mission. I'm not going to give up. I need a change. I've made up my mind. I'm going to fight. Fight for that change. So I'm seeking you out, Lord. I have no doubt. I'm going to change. Another verse. He says, humbly, I come before you because uh, you love me. Let me let me back up. Humbly, I come before thee because you love me. I need a change from what I used to be to what you've called me. I'm giving everything for that change. And then here's the key on the chorus. I surrender all to the spirit's call. I come bearing only me. I leave the world behind, making up my mind that Jesus is who I need. Do you want to make a change? I encourage you to to just hear what the Holy Spirit empowered Greg to read. Certainly all of the scriptures that we've talked about. But to surrender all to the Spirit's call. You're not going to change because Pastor Kevin encourages you to. You're going to change because Holy Spirit puts that in your heart or in your spirit, in your mind. And and you're going to make a choice about your life. If you want to make a change, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And I just want to pray that over us right now because the Bible says, here's what Jesus said in Matthew 5 and 6. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Lives that encounter Jesus Christ are changed. I'm telling you, there was a time that my life was changed from what I used to be to what I am now. And it didn't happen just like that. Certainly my salvation experience did, but it's been a a progressive experience daily living out. I'm not the same person I am today as I was, you know, 15 years ago or even five years ago or even five days ago because the Lord is always working. But I want to pray this that that, that Greg wrote and sometime maybe I'll I'll even encourage Greg just to put it out there on our on our Facebook page. In fact, Chris, if you'll help me, uh, maybe we can find that and just uh, add that up and listen to this song by Gregory Tao. I surrender all. Lord, I pray that right now for us all. Lord, we surrender all. It's not that we're just throwing up our hands in, in, in surrendering our will, but, but, but we do it willingly. In, in, in other words, we're not, we're not just saying we, we just want to be a puppet. That's not what God's calling us to do. But, but when we surrender like Jesus did, not my will, but thine be done, it's a choice. And so we, I, I, I just pray, Lord, what, what, what you gave Greg to write in this song. Lord, we surrender all to the Spirit's call. We come bearing only me. I can't change for anyone else. They can't change anyone else. They can't change me. It's an individual, very personal thing. And even as a community, if we change as a community, Holy Spirit, you're still the one doing the work. We come before you bearing only me. Lord, we leave the world behind. We we don't want to be conformed to this world's thinking, but we'll be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Holy Spirit, we invite you to continue to do that. So Lord, we leave the world behind, the world's thinking behind, the world's thinking that leaves you out. And we invite you, Lord, we've made up our mind that you are who we need and we invite you into our life. You reveal to us where areas that need to change and you empower us and you lovingly encourage us again through the word of God, through Holy Spirit of God and through the people. And I pray a blessing on all of my friends that you would enjoy this 
fall season of change. Hey, there's going to be a time change this Sunday morning at 2 a.m. So we get to fall back. So uh, it's never scary for, for uh, pastors in the fall because you gain an hour, right? You just show up early for church. In the spring is when we show up late, right? But, uh, but we actually gain that extra hour of, of rest and sleep. And I just pray God's blessings upon you as you make positive changes in your life. We love you. God loves you. Be blessed. I've come on a mission, not gonna give up. I need a change. I've made up my mind, I'm gonna fight, fight for the change. Not gonna give up, I need a change.